The European chafer is a beetle that feeds on grass roots in its larval stage, causing dead patches in turf. The beetle is native to Europe, but we have had populations in Washington since 2016. In this video, we will cover what it looks like, its history, its life cycle, and management of this new turf pest. The European chafer adult beetles are usually brick red in color to even a light tan, depending on when you find them after they emerge as adults. As they get older, they do get darker in color. The larvae are C-shaped, creamy white in color, and they get whiter and, and larger as they grow. The head capsules are dark brown, and they have very well-defined legs. As the name implies, the European chafer is native to Europe. It came into the, in the North America in the 1940s in, in New York, where it has since expanded naturally through natural dispersal throughout the East Coast and the Midwest. The European chafer was not known to exist here out on the West Coast until 2001. A master gardener up in British Columbia noticed grubs in their lawn and got them identified and that was the first identification of European chafer here on the west coast. The European chafer started to show up in survey traps deployed by our Washington State Department of Agriculture and they found European chafer in those traps in 2008 along airports like in SeaTac and around King County. Since then, we've found established populations by European chafer in 2016. We've seen the European chafer start to expand its range throughout the SeaTac area, and now we can find European chafer causing significant damage to lawns from north part of Kirkland, throughout Seattle, and all the way down into Tacoma now. It takes one year for the European chafer to complete a life cycle. So we start to see adults lay eggs in June and July. Those eggs hatch into little early instar larvae. Then those larvae will migrate into the soil profile and feed on the fine root hairs of turf grass. As those larvae develop, they'll go through growth stages or instars and get bigger and start feeding more. We don't know much about the life cycle of European chafer in the Pacific Northwest, but we believe the larvae feed all fall and winter long. When they finish growing in about May, April, and early June, they form that pupal stage and start to emerge as adults to begin the whole life cycle over again. The adults do a very unusual thing as they emerge as an adult. In June, when the time's right, the adults time their emergence to late in the day. The adults form mating swarms during the sunset, and they look for a dark silhouette against that setting sun profile. The female will land on that dark silhouette uh, against that setting sun, and then multiple males will swarm around her to compete for mating. After that mating swarm lasts for a few moments, and the female then migrates back down to the soil line to start depositing the eggs to repeat the whole life cycle over again. The European chafer is in the grub stage or larval stage is where most of the damage occurs in turf. The wildlife learns that these are very tasty and good to eat. So you'll see damage from crows and other birds where they go through and pull up the turf to get to the tasty grubs and feed on. In other instances where raccoons and skunks are active, they'll actually peel back the turf and roll it back to feed on the grubs. Managing the European chafer in Washington is a little bit of an unknown. So research is being conducted in the Pacific Northwest to determine effective integrated pest management strategies for this priority pest. Today, I'm gonna to try to give you some hints on how to keep your lawn healthy and get it to recover even if you get some damage from European chafer. European chafers are gonna lay their eggs where the grass is dry and not for fertilized. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you don't have a compacted soil so you can get moisture down into the soil during the times when we normally would not even irrigate. 
So you're going to want to check the root system to see if it's compacted. Uh, you can use a soil probe or a small shovel. And for nutrient-wise, to get the turf to recover, you're going to want to make sure that you've had a soil test within the last three years or so. So another thing that you want to look at with your lawn is the mowing height. This grass that I'm standing on right here is a mixture of old bent grass, probably colonial bent grass and perennial ryegrass. So if you're mowing a lawn like that, it's probably mowed at about two inches, but your height will vary between an inch and a half for just the bent grass because it's such a short grass. If you mow it too, too tall up to the two and a half inches that you might mow if you had Kentucky bluegrass or perennial ryegrass, you're gonna get a lot of thatch. So that would be why you have the moderated mowing height. And then the next thing we want to talk about is just fertility to keep the grass healthy. If you've got an older lawn, say 10 years old uh, and such, you probably have enough fertilizer on the lawn. So you could probably get away with just fertilizing with a slow release fertilizer with about a pound and a half of slow release nitrogen around Memorial Day. And then you want to make sure that it's irrigated in or you put it out right before rainfall so the nutrients can break down and, the, and we can get uptake by the roots. And so we want to get that out on Memorial Day because those eggs of the European chafer are going to be laid in June, July, and August. And then if you uh, need a little bit more fertilizer, then the next time you would want to think about fertilizing would be with the same slow release product, probably around Labor Day. So when we're fertilizing the turf grass, uh, we want to be careful about when we put out phosphorus. Never put phosphorus out unless you sh it shows that it's necessary in your soil test. And remember, if you're going to do some overseeding to fix up a spot, then you should use phosphorus in your fertilizer mix because you need to get that seed to develop. It needs phosphorus for adequate development. One of the main things that we talked about a little bit earlier is the fact that we need to irrigate to keep the European chafer eggs from being laid there by the uh, beetles, the adult beetles. So they will not lay their eggs or have a tendency to be repelled by irrigated turf. I've seen on some athletic fields where we had, where they had irrigation right to the line where the European chafer would lay their eggs up into the point where there was irrigation on the other side where I had irrigation, they did not lay their eggs. In one year, this one field, just the, because of COVID, we decided they weren't going to fertilize, weren't going to water. So that field the year before had been fertilized and watered and there were European chafers around, they had no damage. This last year when they didn't fertilize, didn't water, totally decimated, the whole field will have to be redone. And you're going to see too that these grubs, you're going to see a lot of damage from animals coming in and feeding. Crows are terrible. They tear it out and throw it all over the place. Skunks will dig. Raccoons will roll it up and so you can put it back. But the damage from the animals is going to be far worse than the damage from the grubs. There's a likelihood you are going to get damage from European chafer, so you're going to probably have to use some type of control measures, either preventative or curative, and that's all going to depend on the time of the year and what's, what's available at that point. What stage that grub is at or uh, how far it's feeding, what damage you have. If the beetles have already emerged, you're not going to put out that control. So you need to watch your timing. And then the other thing as well is if you've been irrigating and, and fertilizing and don't have a lot of damage but it's thinned out a little bit, fall is when you can go ahead and overseed a little bit to make sure that you can get the grass to go ahead and fill in before winter. If it's not possible, you aren't treating it, you may have to come back in in spring once you got, are sure that you've gotten the chewing under control and overseed in the spring. Growing a healthy turf lawn, including weed management, nutrition, and irrigation, are all very important for managing the European chafer. The Washington State Invasive Species Council has identified the European chafer as a priority pest in Washington. If you find this insect, you can report a sighting on the Council's website to help determine the distribution of this pest in the Pacific Northwest.